Hello everyone. I do welcome you all to my YouTube channel Sanjay Sir English Classes. We have been discussing a series of questions targeting all the teaching examinations and this one is the part 2 in that series. If you haven't seen the part 1 so far I would like to suggest you to go and watch the part 1 as we discussed many interesting and important points in that series which are quite helpful from the exam point of view the main funda to start such series is not to make you know what is the question or what is the answer but let you know what is the right answer and why what is the right answer and why what are the wrong answers and why that means the basic logics behind all sorts of question got it so it's a complete series where you could learn concepts logics the approach of doing all the questions all sorts of things understood let's start then here is the question the first question <coughs> the boy is both clever and handsome it is dash sentence see this question is based on types of sentence simple compound and complex they are the part of formations means a sentence can be divided on two bases one is formations and another one is functions based on function sentence can be five types declarative interrogative imperative exclamatory and optative sentences now let us see what is imperative sorry simple sentence simple sentence is a type of sentence which has one one independent clause one independent clause this is one independent clause now what is clause clause is a part of a sentence which has its own subject and verb combinations why it is independent because it is not dependent on any others got it the simple sentence is a type of sentence which has one independent clause now moving on to the compound sentence compound sentence is a type of sentence which has more than more than one independent clause more than one independent clause and these are joined by a coordinator what are the coordinator like and like or like so these are coordinator coordinator final one complex sentence complex sentence is a type of sentence which has one independent clause and one or more than dependent clause and they are joined by a subordinator they are joined by subordinator got it subordinator means subordinator means it is like when all the wh words if okay that so these are subordinators come to this one imperative sentence is a type of sentence the sentence which makes a request an order an advice so such sentences are known as imperative sentence 
Now come to the questions. In question it is written, in question it is written what kind of sentence it is. See it has the boy and is. The boy is a subject, is is the verb. So subject verb combinations are there. That means subject verb combinations means it is a clause. So a sentence has only one clause. So when a sentence has only one clause, it is simple sentence. Got it? Second question. Mr. Das lives where? Mr. Das lives where? Means dash is there. So what to fill this dash? Mr. Das lives where? The answer of where is an adverb or must be an adverb. Understood? So here we have the options on upstairs, upstairs, in upstairs, above upstairs. Upstairs. Upstairs, it is an adverb. And we need also an adverb. So the right answer will be upstairs. Upstairs. Got it? Now you also sh you should also know the fact that before an adverb we don't use any prepositions. Before an adverb we don't use a preposition. Upstairs is an adverb, on is a preposition incorrect, upstairs adverb, in is a preposition incorrect, upstairs is an adverb, above is a preposition incorrect. So the right one is B. Question number 3. In question number 3, what is there? Dividing a sentence into sense group. Sense means meaningful groups. While reading is called what? The right answer is chunking. Now why? What is chunking? Chunking is what is written here. Dividing a sentence in a sense group. Like suppose if I say this is my phone number. Suppose. Now I could say my phone number is 9668, 500 and 760. Understood? That means this is my full number and a complete number, 10 digit phone number. But I just divided the 10 digit number into three chunks, three parts to make the listener clearly uh, no, audible or my listener can understand it properly. So I divided it into parts. So that part is called as a chunks. Got it. Now you should also curious to know what is cluster. Isn't it? Cluster means when we have two or more than two consonant sounds without produce, you know, without any vowel sounds. Take, let me give you an example. Suppose we have stray. In that particular word stray, we have to produce three consonant sounds, you know, together. Means sa sound, ta sound and ra sound, stray. So where we just combine more than a two consonant sounds at once without any vowel sounds, it is called as a cluster. Means it is not here, yeah, cluster is not. Come to the stroke. Stroke is generally used to uh, create, you know, suppose we are writing here content. It can be a noun or it can be a verb. If it is a noun, then we just put a mark here. If it is a verb, then we put a mark here. That means to stress a particular word, we just give different stroke in a word. So this 
these are called as a stroke and uh, it is generally used while you are producing a particular sound this is contempt and this second one is contempt got it so the rising you know these are called as a stroke what is intonation then intonation is the variations of tone variations of tones while we uh, utter while we utter a sentence suppose it is written like what it is exclamations or it is written what is it questions so as these are the different questions or sentences we have to pronounce it differently by which the listener could understand that whether you are exclaiming or whether you are questioning so changing the tone of uh, your sentence is called as a while pronouncing a word or a sentence is called as a intonations so in this questions the answer is a chunking dividing a sentence into sense group while reading is called as a chunking all right fourth questions it's a easy one teaching of english in india as a second language has been very important and inevitable now what is the meaning of inevitable inevitable stands for unavoidable teaching english in india is completely unavoidable means it is something which can't avoid since what is since since it is here it's a conjunction since can be a prepositions since can be a conjunction and here it is a conjunctions while it is a conjunction it gives a sense of reason so why because india is a multilingual nations india language indian language books are mostly written in english english is a foreign language and english is a link and international language so the right answer is english is a right answer is english is a link and international language so in the last uh, set means uh, part 1 we discussed like english is our second language s l e first language is odia f l o third language is it is s and h sanskrit or hindi that's why i told you that you should watch also watch the part 1 because there are many things we have discussed those are very important moving on to the question number 4 the substitution table in teaching english is associated with dash stage so before that we need to understand what is the substitution table substitution table is a type of table that means here we learn it to make different sentences like there will be two or three columns you will have like i v u or here options are m is r it is options like a doctor scientist so many columns will be there and we have to choose one for like i am a doctor you are a doctor we are a scientist like this so this is substitution table substitution table is important it is important to make sentences to frame sentences so in which stage it is important it is not important in introduction even presentation not even comprehensions it is required 
in application stage because in this stage you have to frame sentences you have to frame sentences so it is required in application stage what do you mean by comprehensions comprehensions means understanding all right question number next you are a teacher and doing free composition in class 4 your activity will result in what free compositions and you are doing free composition compositions means writing like essay compositions means combining something you are a teacher doing free compositions in class 4 and your activity suppose you set you ask a question your activity will result in making a number of mistakes by the children discouraging children from writing for the increasing correction work for the teacher so the our answer is means what is the questions about means you are a teacher you ask your students to write com a compositions then when your students attempt writing the compositions then what will the result what will be the result the result will be the result will be the students may make number of mistakes or if they make mistake they will feel discouraged and increasing correction work if they make mistake and your task will be you know heavier so the right answer is here d all of this got it question number next chorus reading last part one also such kind of concept was there chorus chorus reading in teaching poem is done usually now what is the chorus chorus meaning is group chorus means group means reading together a poem so when it is before introducing the poem after the introductions during the teaching the lessons and at the end of the lessons the right answer is chorus reading is there or is uh, should be done when at the end of the lessons why because chorus reading helps the fluency among the students it helps to build up their self esteem so that's why chorus reading is important and it is generally done at the end of the lessons got it eight question is put put tick mark or cross mark in the box if the statement is right and wrong question is liquid do not have a definite shape you are asked either to give tick or to put cross ice is lighter than water give tick or cross question is not this one all right question starts from here the test item inside the box means such kind of activities are done for what such kind of activities are done for what to recall recall means to remember the past to recognize means to identify see whether it is cog or it is gno these are what these are root words got it these are root words and these root words have a meaning also means no like from cog recognition recognize from gno you can say ignorance so those words are related directly or indirectly related to the sense of 
no matching type matching type means column type completions type means it is generally used at the end of the sentence some part is written you have to complete the rest part of the sentence or paragraph but whether we have to you know stick whether the sentence is right or wrong it is depend upon your identifications knowledge so this kind of questions are based on what recognition type it's not recall it's not matching it's not completion it is completely recognition type next question is the aim the aim of teaching english is to acquire the knowledge of c is and to acquire like i can write here a sentence i am to leave now i am to leave now m m plus 2 plus first form of a verb is generally used to express something which is going to happen immediately to generally these are this kind of sentence are used to express an immediate actions in future remember these are very interesting structure the aim of teaching english is to acquire the knowledge of what knowledge of grammar words or phrases sentences aim of teaching is not only related to the grammar vocabs or sentence but it is related to overall knowledge means you need to understand the language skills so the right answer is what language skills 10 10 question is what sentence is given i want a cup of dash coffee the strong coffee or powerful coffee he is a dash smoker heavy smoker or big smoker it is told that fill in the blanks choosing the suitable words but question is not that question is the task in the box test learners ability in what whether it test spelling pronunciations collocations idiomatic use that means strong powerful heavy big it's not spelling test it's not pronunciation test even it's not idiomatic use let me define idiomatic use for you what do you mean by idiomatic use idiomatic use means where you cannot get the dictionary direct meaning of that particular word phrase or sentence right like we learn idioms written something but it has an indirect sense or meaning that is called idiom like uh, nothing is uh, you know something is better than nothing like this means written something or it has a different sense now let us know what is collocations collocations stand for generally uh, the word you know suppose uh, let me give an example it is uh, like the common word or suppose i dash a mistake i dash mistakes i dash mistakes if we go in a translation manner then i can say i did mistakes but did is not the proper word it is i made mistakes i committed mistakes got my points suppose he dash goals 
then translation wise you can say he, he gave goals but gave is not the right word it is the he scored goals so collocations means exactly the the exact word used in that particular situation is called collocations means the combination of two words generally used in our uh, spoken or generally used in a maximum cases that is called collocations okay so here it is i want a cup of dash copy strong copy or powerful copy we i want a cup of strong copy strong copy means where in that copy the amount of copy or taste of copy will be more that is called as a strong copy he is a dash smoker heavy smoker or big smoker he is a big smoker he is a what he is a big smoker not the heavy smoker the person who smokes a lot we call him he is a big smoker so the collocated word the appropriate word used in this situation is in the first sentence it is it is powerful and in the second it is the pick so the right answer is here collocations next one the closing phrase of a formal letter what is formal letter formal letter it is a type of letter generally written you know officially written letters are called as a formal letters in formal letters what we write to our friends uh, parents these are called informal letter what do you mean by closing phrase that means the final phrase when we close writing everything we are to close our letter then one is called as a closing phrase options are here yours faithfully yours faithfully yours faithfully yours faithfully so the word we need to remember or learn is your second word is yours third word is your apostrophe s okay so these are the thing we need to learn see your is an adjective or it is also called as a determiner we can say it is a possessive adjective it is a possessive adjective or it is a determiner yours it's a possessive pronoun it's a possessive pronoun or it is a, it's a possessive pronoun yours it is incorrect reason is that we generally used apostrophe s after a noun to give us make a sense of positions we use apostrophe s after a noun for possessive sense got it for possessive sense so either it is possessive pronoun or possessive adjective or possessive pronoun both are already showing the possessive sense so there is no need to, to add additionally apostrophe s so in that sense this one is incorrect this one is incorrect approximately <coughs> options wise both these options are same it is written uh, probably it's a printing mistake slightly options might be something different but the answer one is will be any any one yours faithfully or as well as yours both are written same but it is a printing mistake slightly so the answer will be here anything either b or d both are written same all right next one d which is not a sub skill of speaking sub skill of speaking if you want to become a good speaker you should have accuracy you should have fluency 
you should have naturality accuracy means you should you are grammatically correct right structure fluency means you are speaking english without fumbling without uh, pausing all sort naturality means sentences would come uh, to your tongue one after another without any thinking or without any effort so these three are important to make you a good speaker so they are the sub skill but question is not not a sub skill our answer is in efficiency questions number 13 what is the question he gave me dash useful book useful we have to use article we can't use your some first thing some is a determiner but if some is used before a noun then the noun must be plural we have to say if it is some books then it was okay but we have only book so some is cancelled now he gave me dash these are indefinite article this is definite article so here there is no sense of definite there is no relevant sense it is written so the is also cancel now we have to choose a or an a is used before a consonant sounds an is used before a vowel sounds so when we pronounce u it gives a yo sound yo means it gives a consonant sounds so that he gave me a useful book question number 14 we have a holiday dash christmas preposition on is used uh, for event in is used for a duration of time at is used for an exactness exact sense and for is used to express purpose they have also other uses but uh, here these are effective so we have a holiday we have a holiday when exact is a christmas is written so we have a holiday at christmas at christmas exact as it is used to express the exact sense the right answer is at 15 down went the bell with a gurgling sounds see this sentence is written in an inverted sense these are called as inversion writing such kind of sentence is known as inversion inversion means let me give you an example he hardly helps he hardly helps this is a declarative sentence because is subject then it is verb if i write does he help or does he hardly help then this will be an question sentence interrogative sentence reason the helping verb the helping verb comes before the subject so if it is a declarative one then subject and verb this is the order if it is an interrogative sentence then verb comes before subject but in the inversion inversion is a type of declarative sentence it's a type of declarative sentence where verb comes before the subject 
means the bell is the main subject went is its verb down is adverb now where we use inversion if the sentence starts with an adverb especially negative adverb adverb of place then we use inversions means the right if we want to write it in a not inversion but in declarative sense then the sentence would have written like this the bell with a gurgling sound bell with a gurgling sound went down went down means went is a verb with gurgling sound it is used for the subject the bell means the main subject is the bell so the right answer is the bell right answer is c all right next priya saying priya is saying this i come in sir easy question teacher yes priya why are you so late that means it is a conversation between priya and teacher now priya wants permission priya wants permissions and the permissions means it's a formal permissions teacher is a person to whom we give respect so priya wants formal permissions for formal permission we generally use me formal permission we generally use what me will and shall both are used to express a future actions might is used for less possibilities so formal permission we use what may so then the right answer is may mr patel is a dash doctor this one we discussed in the earlier set also part 1 also whatever written here these are adjectives and as i told the right order of adjectives are o s a s c o m p o stands for opinion a s for side a for <coughs> is a s for shape c for color O for origin, M for material, and finally P for what? Purpose. Purpose. <laughs> Now, Yong. Yong is the age. Indian. Indian is the origin. Handsome. Handsome is a opinion. Got it. so what we need at the beginning we need opinion at the beginning so the right answer is handsome tall tall is size young young is as indian indian is origin so the right order is mr patel is a handsome tall young indian doctor over question number next which of the following is correctly punctuated question related to punctuations what it is written oh god save me so this is combination of two sentence one is oh god exclamations save me imperative the sentence starts with a verb generally imperative sentence expresses request order advice isn't it so save is a verb imperative sentence starts with a verb generally so save me is an imperative one so here exclamation mark greeted here full stop is needed according to that the right answer is b Oh God, save me! Here it is. 
small letter incorrect we need capital letter because the beginning of a sentence should be with capital letter we don't need here small even comma is not needed right answer is b she has been living here she has been living has present been perfect living progress been completion it shows completion perfect continuity progressive has present so it is written present perfect progressive for present perfect progressive if we have a time if we have a time we generally use for as well as since before it so as we use for and since so this option is incorrect now for is used to express a period of time since is used to express a point of time for is used for period of time this one used to express a point of time but here it is four years the last four years four years is completely duration it is a period so we require for answer is what for not since a is the right one days were absent days were absent we have to choose pronouns and here all all our personal pronouns all our what personal pronouns see personal pronouns it is three types first persons it is second persons it's third persons first person sing i and we second person is you both singular and plural i singular we plural third person remaining it is he she and it singular and they plural okay so then what will be the right order the right order when we are expressing something general fact a general fact or we are expressing something pleasant sense we generally put the order in a 2 3 1 2 means it is second persons then third persons pronoun first person pronoun third person pronoun and it is first person pronoun all right 2 3 1 this is uh, this rule has been formed based on the general way of our conversation then when we are giving a uh, expressing some pleasant sense or general conversation we keep the first person at the end of the order when somebody makes a mistake or somebody is to blame uh, is guilty then we put first i at the first order understood so here it is not something uh, where we can uh, uh, we are guilty of something else it is used in a general fact so the right order will be 2 3 1 2 3 1 means this is you 2 he 3 and 1 the first person so right answer is you he and i b and verb will be where because it is a compound subject it is written subjects are joined by end when subjects are joined by end then the subject is known as compound subject then questions number 21 to 30 all are passages passages are quite easy theme is thing is you have to read the passages just uh, what scan and scheme scan means identify the important words 
important information and scheme is that uh, have the gist or summary of the passage in your mind. So let us read the passage. Among the cheap sources of education available to Tagore was a quiet, quiet garden adjoining his family. Here he used to spend much of his time absorbing peace and beauty of nature. It was through his early contact with nature he acquired that serenity of mood which distinguished him all his life. It was in this garden too that he came to understand that principle of harmony was at work throughout the universe. At the same time he formed the habit of absorbing and reflecting things. Okay. So what is the passage about? That passage is about Rabindranath Tagore. It was his uh, how he spent his time, how he spent his time with nature to learn something, to feel the serenity or beauty of the nature. So the passage is all about this one. What are the, if you are to make a scan, scan means important, cheap sources of education. Cheap sources of education to Tagore was quiet garden, one. So the first question is based on this one also. Tagore spent much of his time in the garden adjoining, adjoining means near his family house for what? Options are plucking flowers and enjoying their smell, loitering and singing. Loitering means just wandering, just wandering. Enjoying natural peace and beauty, sleeping and dreaming. So the right answer is enjoying natural peace and beauty. Correct? Next. By spending most of his time in the garden, Tagore developed the habit of habit and another word you need to remember habit and custom. Both have the same meaning you know, in translation wise, rudia wise, both have the same meaning. But habit is something which is followed by individual, individually, personal. And custom is followed by group wise. Okay. Habit of meditating every day, taking life easy, being absorbed in the poetic thoughts, or absorbing things carefully. So the right answer is what? Absorbing as it is written this one, absorbing and reflecting on things. Here remember one word is observe and another word is absorb. Absorb stands for shock and observe means watch vividly. So the right answer is observe things carefully. 23. To the great poet, the garden adjoining his family was a dash. A convenient playground. Convenient means suitable. Is it a suitable playground? Source of pleasure or entertainment? Beautiful place for writing poetry or a means of education. At the beginning, it is written among the chief sources of education. So, it is a means of education. Now, let me tell you another thing. A means is written. A means here means means a medium. Means means after adding S, it gives a sense of medium. Like we say, means of transportations. 
means of communications so here means means singular that's why a is correct next the garden adjoining to the poet's family house is described as noisy beautiful quiet thrilling so right answer is no doubt quiet as it is clearly mentioned in the passage but you need to know more things noisy and noise noise is a noun noisy is an adjective like you can remember easy is an adjective and ease is a noun same beautiful and beauty beauty is a noun whereas beautiful is an adjective again quiet and another word is quiet quiet is an adjective means calm quiet is an adverb quiet quiet means approximately quiet is what approximately thrilling thrilling stands for exciting vocab is also equally important without learning vocab how can you develop right so you have to look for everything at a time so the right answer is quiet quiet next final questions the phrase serenity of mood serenity means calmness calmness or we can say that tranquility means the balance of mind passage means des mood which mood calm and quiet the mood is calm and quiet so answer is a here it is written angry you should know angry and anger anger is a noun and uh, angry is an adjective rivalry and rival rival is a noun rivalry is an adjective retaliating means opposing opposing okay so it is right answer becomes what a hope you are enjoying the class it's little bit long but i do think that you need to understand everything bit by bit properly because in exam you will not find such questions you know uh, the particular question in your exam but you will find such types of questions so you need to uh, learn all sorts of things which will help you to attempt such kind of questions further so that's why i am telling you in detail now another passes passes is most paper comes from wood fast trees are cut down the logs are taken to the paper mill to the tape paper mill logs are washed cut into small pieces these pieces are then put into pulp digester where they are broken down by steam and chemicals this process releases wood fiber this is mixed with dyes to form wood pulp which is passed through screens to remove the hard pieces which have been dissolved dissolved means uh, it's kind of melted the wood pulp fed into the paper making machines a pump spreads thin layer so the whole process is how paper is formed the whole process is based on how paper is formed then means the raw material is wood and the final product is paper and in between what is the process the steps let's attempt the questions when the logs of first arrive at the mill then what will we do normally what will we do normally they are cut into pieces 
they are cut into small pieces they are put into pulp digester or they are washed it is directly written the logs are washed passed through the through the screens it is not so the right answer is what c second questions the dyes are added when the dyes are added this is mixed with the dyes to form the wood pulp which is then passed through the screens so the dyes are added after the pulp passes through the screens no after the fiber is released the dyes are added this process releases wood fiber and this is mixed with dyes so first we get wood fiber then it is dyes b is the answer a pump a pump dash spreads paper pulp on the wire screens removes hard pieces flattens check about the pump a pump sprays a thin layer of the liquid paper pulp into a moving wire skins so the right answer is 20 a the heated rollers 29 the heated rollers are used there to bundle the paper to cut the paper to dry here it is written heated rollers heated rollers so heater roller which is press and dry it to dry the paper final questions this passes describes the process of dash this whole passes describe the process of making paper from wood like i told at the beginning of the passes the whole process is written how to make paper from so this is all about the today's series it may be long but have patience when you learn everything in a detail gradually it will elaborate your skills knowledge not that okay, what is the answer and what is the question and what is the answer just knowing the answer will not help you to qualify the exam to qualify the exam you need to know that what will be your approach why others are not like this such things are very very important so i hope you have really enjoyed the say nations sorry series and uh, we will definitely update more and more series like that so stay tuned and uh, if it is helpful please uh, like it and if you think that it is helpful for others please share it with, with others share the video and also subscribe the video as if you want to the more and more video more updates based uh, related to this uh, series got it so keep enjoying keep practicing keep learning thank you thank you for the Thank you for watching.